I'd like a tin of sardines, please. Daniel heaved an inward sigh. Tuesday night, five minutes to closing, right on time. We don't sell sardines, Miss Finch. We're a hardware store. He tapped his name tag, a smiling cartoon hammer, and watched a wrinkled face pucker with confusion. But I always buy my sardines here. No, Miss Finch. The grocery store closed three years ago. Three years? Daniel checked the clock again. Four minutes to closing. Why couldn't she torment someone else? Why not Jackie in fixtures? Why not that jerk Todd in plumbing? With an effort, he hitched a smile onto his face. Forget what I said, Miss Finch. I'll have some ordered for you for next week. Thank you, dear, she said. I'm preferable to the ones in mustard myself. Of course. I'll be sure to double up on those. Flying monkeys, too, Daniel thought to himself, because that's as likely as you remember in this conversation. Half an hour later, as he crossed the empty parking to his car, Daniel noticed a solitary figure at the bus stop. Ms. Finch, patiently waiting for the first of three buses he knew it would take to get her home. He looked at his car. He looked at the cloud-filled sky. He'd been working all day. He earned the right to go home. It probably wouldn't rain. Probably. Ms. Finch. The benignly confused face turned to him. Yes? It's Daniel, from the hardware store. Can I give you a ride home? Oh, no, dear. I'm all right. You go on. A drop of rain splashed on Daniel's nose, then another. He decided to play his trump card. Welburn's is still open. We could stop and get you some sardines. Forty-five minutes later, Daniel found himself high-stepping down a weed-choked path, the wind and rain lashing out, bashing two string bags filled with cans of sardines into his knees at every step. Once in the right store, Ms. Finch had proved herself a fanatic and single-minded shopper, and Daniel had begun to regret his decision. The car ride to her home had been an eternity of inane questions, without context, reason, or even rhyme. Daniel couldn't wait to turn around and go home. Ahead of him, Ms. Finch had unlocked a peeling deep green door and disappeared inside. A light flicked on, illuminating a narrow corridor and dark stairway leading up, seemingly without end. This way, she said, shuffling down the passage. Daniel stepped inside, glad to be out of the grasping wind, and followed the scuffing of her feet down the hall into a dingy brown and orange kitchen. Put the cans on the table and have a biscuit, dear, said Miss Finch, filling a kettle from a tap belching forth indiscriminately rusty water. I made them myself. I should be going, actually, said Daniel, putting the bags on the table. Go on, then. One won't hurt. Daniel eyed the plate of plain brown cookies. Made with real butter. Daniel took the cookie closest to him, just to keep her happy. He bit in, buttery fragments crumbling on his tongue, waves of clove and cinnamon sliding across his taste buds. Mmm, delicious. I'm so glad. I was worried you might be one of those young men who don't like spice cookies. She shambled across the floor and took the bags of tins from the table. I do so hate it when a young man comes in, takes a bite, and spits it out, after all the work I put in. Let me get those, Daniel said, stepping forward. His legs felt loose and rubbery. After two steps, he had to grab the table to keep from falling over. Feeling all right, dear? Maybe you should sit down. Daniel shook his head. He was having trouble with his mouth now as well. As you like. The two bags swinging from one hand, Ms. Finch opened a cupboard to reveal tinned sardines in all flavors. 
in hot sauce, in lemon sauce, with hot peppers, in oil, smoked in water. I know what you're thinking, she said, looking at Daniel. Why would she ever need more sardines? She opened a second cupboard, only half filled, and threw the bags in. Well, I'll tell you. It's about individual tastes. She grabbed a can of sardines and crossed back to Daniel. The last girl who came by, so bitter, needed a little bit of sweet, drizzled her with honey and sardines in olive oil. Delicious! Then there was the man before her, an accountant. Dull, boring, but a can of sardines in hot sauce. Just the thing. Daniel tried to reach for his phone, his pockets, anything, but his hands remained firmly on the tabletop, his feet refused to move, even his tongue disobeyed him. The old woman was slavering by now, slurring her words as she grasped the tin's ring. Then there's young people, delicate, tender morsels. Always willing to help their poor, confused elders. So polite. But they have no time to mature, to develop their flavor. Slowly she pulled the lid off of the sardines, and a great fishy, mustardy aroma filled the air. And as I said, it's all about the taste. Corinne was cashing out early. It had been a long day, and if one more person accidentally hit her with a lacrosse ball, there were going to be problems. The soft clearing of a throat brought her eyes to the clock, three minutes to closing Wednesday night. Already she knew who it would be, had a polite smile ready, and her patient pants on. I'd like a tin of sardines, please. 